Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I'm going to be talking about uh, almost a little mini State of the Union for Dungeons & Dragons, what the current status is from my perspective, okay, from my perspective. All right, so basically, uh, well, the reason why I'm talking about this is I saw this morning um, take, Taking 20 uh, on the, his YouTube channel. He was talking about some news that came in, came out of um, stream of many eyes. Okay, so there was a uh, there was a stream, a Dungeons and Dragons stream that was coming out of um, the le- um, the West Coast, right? And I think it came out of Los Angeles, and uh, basically it was a, a very high profile, professional grade stream. I think uh, Joe Magnola was in it. Uh, the big show from uh, uh, wrestling was was playing. There were like multiple things happening, right? Now, why do I not know more what was happening on these streaming uh, events? Well, one, there are a lot of streaming events that are getting that are being anointed by Wizards of the Coasts now, where they're they're saying, "Hey, we're gonna do, we're gonna play D and D." There's gonna be these these YouTube celebrities. There's gonna be these community celebrities. There's gonna be actual celebrities. Right, um, you know, and so there's a celebration of celebrity rubbing it up, rubbing itself up against Dungeons and Dragons overall, you know, and, and celebrity from different corners, right? Um, and and also, you recently you've been seeing Wizards of the Coast uh, again anointing some of these major creators who have been creating content that is Dungeons and Dragons adjacent for a long time. Uh, Satine Phoenix has recently been brought into the fold. Uh, they did an announcement on, on what she's going to be doing. It's, it's hundred percent, you know, basically she is officially connected to Wizards of the Coast, um, and doing official work for them. It wasn't super clear for me from the, from the, um, from the announcement exactly what the extent of her, her duties are. And that's going to become, you know, more clear as, as we go forward. But one of the things that I'm seeing, so when I look at Dungeons and Dragons and Wizards of the Coast and what Wizards of the Coast is doing with Dungeons and Dragons, where they seem to be spending the majority of their time, the majority of their energy, is specifically uh, with doing um, streaming events and engaging with the community and encouraging creators who have who have been able to produce great content on a regular basis and really kind of pointing the rest of the Dungeons and Dragons community to them, which is really interesting. They also are continuing to create some books. So just this weekend, we got to see um, uh, Dragon Heist, uh, Waterdeep Dragon Heist, and Waterdeep uh, Mage of the Mad. Um, uh, actually, so there's two books that are recently coming out. They're both Waterdeep specific. Uh, Jarlaxle is coming in and all and all of these things. So this is all going on. It's all very interesting. Um, from from where I stand, it, I think it's even a little bit more interesting. And the reason why is uh, I see such a huge difference in how Wizards of the Coast is approaching Dungeons and Dragons today than they were in the 2000s or in the 1990s or in the 1980s, which is really interesting. So here's so one of the things I see, like for instance, let's talk about settings. Out of the stream of many eyes, there was an announcement that before the year is out, there will be another setting that players can play in and game masters can game master in before 2018 is out, right? And it's going to be a new a new setting to 5th edition. So let's be super clear. This is a new setting to 5th edition, not a new setting, right? So this is fascinating to me and like you have to you have to pay attention, right? 5th edition is the only Dungeons & Dragons edition that has never introduced a single new setting. It's the only one, right? Uh, first edition had settings that were unique to it. Second edition had settings that were new. And that First edition had settings that were new and unique to it. Second edition had settings that were new and unique to it. Third edition had settings that were new and u- unique to it. Fourth edition had settings that were new and u- unique to it. Fourth edition had the least. Nantir Veil vale was the only one, actually. And then fifth edition, nothing. Nothing. Absolutely no new settings for Dungeons and Dragons. And then in addition to that, not only are there no new settings for Dungeons and Dragons, but they are not even doing setting books in the traditional perspective, right? So so in the old days, in the 1990s and in the 2000s, you would get 
here is a setting book and there's an adventure in it. Now it's flipped, it's completely inverted. There are now adventure books that are as long as old setting books, right? And they're saying, here is a you know 250 page adventure and there is a setting mentioned in this adventure, right? And you can play in this tiny little corner that we've painted for you within that setting, right? Now, which is fascinating because it's completely inverted. Now, the reality is I'm not complaining about any of this. And the reason why is I have already been served, right? Scott Garibay already has what he wants from Dungeons Dragons 5th Edition. I wanted a rock solid new edition with PHB, DMG, Monster Manual, right? That 5th edition is better than any setting that, and better than any edition that's ever been created. It is absolutely rock solid platform. You know, it's a bedrock. It is granite that can that you can build your own campaigns on, right? And literally thousands of game masters are doing just that. They're building their own worlds on Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition, right? And that's really exciting. And that and that's all that I need, right? And the reality is, why is I'm a game master, right? I'm going to build my own worlds. I'm going to make everything happen from those three books. Those three books are, you know, are a grocery store for me as the chef. I can make any meal I want. You know what I mean? And so that's really all I need from 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 Dungeons and Dragons and from Wizards of the Coast until Sixth Edition comes out, right? And actually, I'm even fine with that. I don't need Sixth Edition right away, right? Now I love seeing a new edition. It's always exciting for me. Uh, I do think we, it would be ideal if we could get eight years between each, each edition. But I think generally we're going to be seeing six or seven years between editions. And I think it'll be probably in the sixth year after, you know, we're in the fourth year of fifth edition. I think either, uh, you know, at Origins next year or the year after that, they'll announce, announce sixth edition is being built, right? So, and, and of course, you know, in my opinion, Kate Welch is current. Kate Welch was hired. I believe she was hired specifically to be the um, the new replacement uh, to be the, the the lead designer for sixth edition. I believe she's being mentored right now to be the lead designer for sixth edition. I think that's what's happening, right? I've been saying this for a long time. I've been saying this for like two days after she was she was hired, right? So I think that's the path that's being followed. But it really is absolutely fascinating that we went from having robust. Uh, new edition books, uh, robust setting books that had an adventure in them. To now, to now, the model is here's an adventure book, and within that adventure book, we have mentioned a setting. Right? Really, really fascinating. So, very, very interesting to see. Um, very, very interesting overall. What what is happening? Right? So you so you have all this going forward, and um, and you know uh, all this is occurring. And, and and this is the current state, right? The other issue is um, it, it it is really odd for me because I love Dungeons and & Dragons, and I actually think that Mike Merles and his crew, uh, Jeremy Crawford and Chris Perkins and Todd Krennic, um, all these guys are doing exactly what, you know, and, and Kate Welch, they're doing exactly what needs to be done. I believe they're heading in the right direction. And so with that said, I really, um, you know, I really think it's good that we are going in the direction that we're going. Uh, and the reason why is one, I'm not a big fan of the streaming of streaming games. And one of the reasons why is, of course, like, you know, like it, it's really it's really odd for me as a Dungeons and Dragons player to understand what's happening now. Right. And the reason why is there are literally you know, hundreds of thousands, if not low millions of players who are excited about watching a Matt Mercer game, right? A Matt Mercer Dungeons and Dragons game. I'll tell you right now, Scott Garibay's never going to be excited about watching a streaming game. And the reason why is I run my own games. Like I don't I don't need to watch anybody play a game. That's like I don't I don't get that, right? So it's just really strange for me, right? That that the energy and the momentum of the community is coming not from playing the game but from watching the game. And I think right now, that's where growth for the game is happening. Uh, growth, growth for the game is coming from stream watchers. 
it is really not coming from players, right? And I, you know, there's a lot of great creators out there, and there's there's cool content being created, um, and there's a celebration of the game. I love all that, and I and I like the other thing is, I was not, you know, to me, I was like, hey, the energy for the game should be coming from play, play reports, um, you know, players, right? Not streamers and people who are watching their streams, but I, I you know, I, I will say it. I think Mike Morales is smarter than I am. He realized that the momentum of the game was coming from streamers and stream watchers, right? And so I think the, the game is in great hands. They're making they're making decisions I would not make. They're making they're taking the game in a direction that I would not take the game from the perspective of, you know, streaming is not that important to me. Watching somebody play a game is not that important to me. It's hard for me to understand where the excitement is coming from from you know streamers watching games and then getting excited about the game right to me the, the excitement has always come from reading the books from sitting at the table with players from building our own worlds all of that right you know and so uh but without a doubt mike morales has proven it right 8.6 million people played dungeons and dragons last year it's it's a huge number the game is when i went to pax penny arcade unplugged last year they ran out of game masters they ran out of slots. They could not serve the, you know, at Penny Arcade Unplugged in Philadelphia, which is a board game convention. They could not serve the demand for the number of players who wanted to play in Dungeons and Dragons. So I think Mike Burles is doing a, a fantastic job in growing the world. He's taking a different path than I would have taken. And I think he's taking the right path. You know, people are responding to stream streamers and stream watchers are growing, you know, and so to me, I am hoping that that is going to convert into players at the table, playing with the traditional actual books. Um, and I think it does. I really do. I think it does. And I think all that's exciting, and we're heading in the right direction. But it is. But the you know the big the biggest takeaway for me right now is if you look at where D and D is right now, we're seeing an inversion. Uh, in the old days, we got a robust setting book. And it had an adventure in it. Now you get a robust adventure book, and it has a setting that's mentioned in it. Really, really fascinating change. Take care.